moving on to the next topic, that is Okwama killing and fear of militancy return in south southern Nigeria. And we have joining us live from Yenegua Ebilade Kerefe. He's the ex IYC national spokesman. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us at this time. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, all right. Now, moving on to the topic we have at hand, I could imagine that it has not really been a peaceful, or well, past peaceful weeks for people in that area where the killing took place. But so far, what's your assessment of the situation, the military's response, and the, the results that we have obtainable now? Well, uh, so far, so good. Uh, the, the so-called perpetrators of this dastardly crime have still not been arrested. They have not been prosecuted and they have not faced justice. What we are saying is military that have uh, taken over ancestral communities of uh, Okwama and, uh, and its environs in the search of looking for these criminals. As concerns the business of this country and the major stakeholder in the Niger Delta project, our call is for the military, you know, to uh, uh, work with the locals to gather intelligence that will lead to their pre uh, to them apprehending these persons who have committed this uh, dastardly act. And I'm equally very happy that the military too is listening to voice of reasoning. They have uh, allowed the the governor of uh, Delta State to also go into Okwama and assess things for himself. And uh, from the pictures we have seen, clearly, you could see that the entire community was uh, raised down. What, what we saw was uh, uh, a, uh, a, a church building and a few uh, uh, properties that are not uh, uh, this thing. So for us, there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, it should go, go beyond just rhetoric. And uh, the real perpetrators of this dastardly act should be brought to book. And the uh, communities, indigenous of those communities, should also be allowed to relocate back to their communities so that they can uh, continue with their livelihood. As I speak with you, they are still currently at large. Communities are still displaced. People are still living in the forest. They have no food to eat. So there is a humanitarian crisis. So uh, we should be able to know where these uh, displaced citizens of this country are and get them back to their communities so that they can continue with uh, their livelihood. I thank you so much for that. And now to my guest here in the studio, Dr. Felix Oronda. How did you take that news? Because, well, it's something that has been in the news for the past two weeks now. The one that soldiers were killed while on a peacekeeping mission, mission. yes, in the Okwama area of Delta State. You know, it's not just uh, the only soldiers that were killed. There were six policemen yes. that were even killed before the soldiers. And uh, the police was not going to take it very seriously until they saw the authority or give over the soldiers and how the military took it very seriously. And they now, uh, and the family members of those six policemen had to come out to say, okay, we have seen the military, the way they've taken this. Why are you trying to cover up our own uh, people that were killed in the same manner? So, and you know, you can reference OD massacre. That's how it started during the Obasanjo administration. The policemen, I think about 11, were killed in Udi. And that's till tomorrow. I don't think that, that uh, community recovered from it. Because, you know, the soldiers or policemen went there and they brought the place to the ground. And they raised it to the ground. So, uh, I mean, how will Nigerian military, who were out there to make peace, to bring peace to those communities, who are come from all parts of the country from the north and they are there to make not in our own country internal we call it internal security okay and you go there and master you don't know that they were not just killed some of their heads were cut off for ritual purposes okay they were they were they were decapitated or what do you call it Did they swim that? yes so, so they have to be looking for their parts of their bodies so when when, when who will take that 
So I think the community is over there. Because we remember that when we were young, when we saw each other in our community, we are so happy. You see people who are going to bring them things, you know, to give them things, to just identify with them. That's how soldiers are treated in some other parts of the country when you see them. Okay? People will go out of their way to make them comfortable, give them food stuff, just cooperate with them to make their stay. Because you know that they are coming from other parts of the country. They have led their families, their loved ones to come and work and secure your community. And in this environment, is how to kill them, how to cut off their feds, how to, you know, remove their intent. All kinds of things that you can't be seen on television. But the chief minister couldn't resist himself to say it. So I'm sure <laughs> they've not, I'm sure that they are going to see more of that because the military will go all the way down to make sure they find out who were responsible. Because why those ones were being done? The native of those communities cannot pretend that they don't know those people who are behind it. That's okay. the truth. We also have the case of uh, when the police declared some people wanted, they declared the monarch who willingly presented himself to the police to show his innocence. And then he was also, he was released from the custody of the police last week because one the military, of the... you mean? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you for that. <laughs> so because yes. one of the senators representing that how area... To stand uh, yes, how to speak. Right. And then they found out that it was of good conduct, so they had to release him. They released him to the particular senator representing that area of Delta State. But if we look at when... Um, when the governor of Biosaste, Duyadiri, when he went to that area, he called on the military to make sure that they intensify investigations and do investigations again because he worried that this might be the return of militancy in south-southern Nigeria. Do you think that the worry of the governor of Biosaste State is legit or maybe this is not something we have to worry about just yet? No, the governor is the chief security officer of Bayelsa State, and if uh, the governor is speaking, he's talking from uh, an informed point of view, and his uh, uh, assertion should be taken very, very seriously, because uh, the Bayelsa State is uh, one of the major oil-producing uh, states in the Niger Delta region, you know, and... Uh, uh, a state where is also governing is, is equally affected by the military uh, invasion. So he's speaking from uh, a well point, uh, from an from a well informed point of uh, view, and the statement that is coming from the governor of Bayasa State should not be taken for granted. Even beyond this Okwama killing, you could recall that uh, the fundamental issue which led to the amnesty proclamation has not been addressed. And so resurgence of violent conflict in the Niger Delta region is still much eminent. Unfortunately, the federal government is only interested in the crude oil that is coming out from the Niger Delta region. So they are not really paying attention you know, to the, uh, the desires and to the demands of the people. And so when you begin to see um, actions of this nature clearly if it is not properly handled it might lead to conflagration in the Niger Delta and that is why stakeholders like HOS and other stakeholders in the Niger Delta project are calling on the federal government to revisit the Niger Delta question and address the fundamental issues that have led to this uh, 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 crisis that that is eminent in the region the environment is a major issue as i speak with you till today the niger delta environment is worse compared to other oil producing uh, uh, regions in this world over 240,000 barrels of crude oil is being spilled on the environment of the niger delta region the federal government is not even talking about remediation of the environment. This environment is where the Niger Delta people survive from. The socioeconomic livelihood of the Niger Delta people is on our environment. We, all we do is fishing and farming. But because of the exploration activities of these multinational oil companies, you could see that the environment has been completely destroyed. It has also affected the uh, 
the, the life expectancy rate of our people. People die, you know, uh, uh, below their average age. And so these are some of the problems that the Ninja Delta people are scrabbling with. So uh, when the Ninja Delta issue is being addressed, you know, it should be addressed holistically in such, in such a way that the people who are also producing, producing this oil will have that sense of belonging in this country. And it's, you could see from uh, the reports that we are already getting from the Okwamakili, you know, it's not just a, a communal conflict between uh, Okoloba and the Okwama community per se. If you dig deeper, it is also oil related. And so the, 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 the security agencies, the multinational oil companies and the federal government, you know, should come clean and everybody should work together to ensure that there is no vandalization of oil pipelines. That is an uninterrupted uh, supply of crude oil production. And the, the communities, the host communities where this oil uh, is coming from are also adequately being taken care of. But if that is not happening, I can assure you that uh, there could be a resurgence of violent conflict in the Niger Delta region. And that is not what we want. the role of NDDC in this particular in to mitigate this crisis because you mentioned that the Niger Delta area is not really well taken care of and I felt like that is part of the that is part Mind of it. what brought what Mind brought it. forth the creation of NDDC to make sure that this oil producing states are well taken care of and the environment to the host communities all of them are well taken care of so what role do you think that NDDC to has to play in making sure that the Niger Delta area of Nigeria remains safe and peaceful and also environmentally friendly? Well, as I think the federal government is doing the Niger Delta Development Commission over, over uh, one trillion naira of NDDC money is tied in the hands of the federal government. Now we have equally called on the federal government to release those funds immediately. If there are no funds provided, how can the NDDC take care of the huge developmental challenges of the Niger Delta people? You know, over time, what we have seen is that the NDDC was a cash cow, you know, in the hands of politicians who do not even fought for the establishment of the NDDC in the first place. And so what we are saying is that those persons who are given the responsibility to man the Niger Delta Development Commission should be people who have the interests of the Niger Delta region at, at, at heart. Most times, the federal government or the presidency only appoints people who can do their bidding and not the bidding of the Niger Delta people. And we are happy that this is the, one of the first times that somebody who understands the struggle, who was part and parcel of the struggle, was appointed as uh, the managing director of the Niger Delta Development Commission. The person of uh, Dr. Samuel Oguku is doing a fantastic job. But you see, the, the administration of Samuel Oguku cannot function when there are also bottlenecks attached to that uh, 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 board. So, you know, stakeholders must get involved. There should be accountability on the part of NDC. You recall that under Buhari's administration, they told us that they are carrying out a forensic audit to unravel the infraction that has taken place in the Niger Data Development Commission. And the report was presented to the president after he protracted a, a call from the Joint Youth Council and other stakeholders of the Niger Data region. Up till this moment that I speak with you, there was no implementation of that report. You could see that the entire exercise was a jamboree and billions of naira was expended in that uh, 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 exercise. So you see that when it comes to the Niger Delta question, the politicization of our development has become one of the problems. You know, So uh, it is not something one individual can do. 
You know, it's something that the federal government must have that political will if they are really interested in solving the problems of the Niger Delta region. While we are not extricating our people for the underdevelopment we have currently found ourselves in, it is not our people who are given the opportunity to make those recommendations. You know, most of the times those recommendations are coming from outside the region. And when they are appointed, you, they will do the pedings of those people who have appointed them in the first place. Go to the uh, Northeast Development Commission. You will not see any non, not, you will not see anybody who is not from the Northeast participating in what is going on in that place. But in the Niger Delta Development Commission, the people who have been given contracts here and there are people who are not even from this region. So it is a cash cow. You know, everybody believes that the NDDC is uh, as a huge money and therefore anybody who have access to the presidency will just uh, take advantage of what is going on there at the detriment of the development of this region the niger delta is currently faced with issues of erosion there is serious uh, 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 flooding that is going on in the niger delta region up to this moment as i speak with you the devastation of the 2020-2022 flood has still not been addressed because NDDC does not have the sufficient funds to address those challenges because they are also working on budgets. And so uh, the issues are, are, are so much that it, will, it requires a federal government that is serious to call for a stakeholders meeting of the Niger Delta region for us to look at these issues holistically and come up with a blueprint on how we can develop this region. But so now I'll return to my guest here in the studio. Mm. So we are just talking about um, this fear of militancy return, which even the governor of Bios state, with the wealth of information it might have at hand, is saying that we cannot return to the era of militancy in the south southern region of Nigeria. So what do you think the government could do in terms of security to make sure that that is not going to come back into existence? I think the government, uh, federal government has a lot of interventionist uh, program in the Niger data. They have the amnesty program, there's the NDDC intervention, and that's not excusing the various uh, uh, subnationals the state governments, uh, because our guest um, over there is putting all the developmental challenges on the federal government. Let's not forget that uh, there's a state derivation fund that has been given to those states, okay? And they take a lot of, uh, I think, because of uh, their strategic location, even the federal location that goes to them. So what have those state governments done with those funds, okay? And the NDDC, we know, started in a long time ago. It's not just uh, OMPADEC, then NDDC. Uh, and this is just a, a vehicle created for the, to ameliorate the environmental challenge as sort of oil, crude oil exploration in the, in the region. And they are being governed or they are being piloted by people from that region, substantially. So, and if you now reference the amount of uh, resources that have been committed to the NDDC, then we should have a better outcome from what we are seeing. But it's just a larger Nigerian problem. Which part of Nigeria is actually developed? Uh, you talk of erosion, this afternoon we also complain about erosion. You talk about bad roads, talk about this and that. It's all, almost all part of the country. So, but that's not to belittle the argument of our online uh, guests that a lot needs to be done. Because we have seen uh, the era of militants in the Niger Delta and uh, how. Uh, late President Yera Adua was able to come up with the amnesty program that kind of doused the tension of the Niger Delta and, you know, brought those people out of the creek, okay, and changed their uh, out uh, indoctrination and whatever uh, agri uh, program they were given. Some were, were trained as pilots outside the country, went to schools, uh, acquired skill and able to commit those energy that they put into militants into other ventures. That can benefit their lives. So I think that program is still continuing. Uh, but the militancy that we saw, I mean the killing that we saw uh, of the 17 soldiers, the six policemen, uh, is something that the communities 
have to come into it. The, the traditional rulers, the opinion leaders in that environment. You can't be killing your fellow Nigerians who are there to protect you. Because what brought the soldiers there was inter was border problem between the communities. And they were even killing each other. And that was what brought the soldiers to have that uh, peaceful uh, peace meeting or peace uh, that cost them their lives. It was because the two communities were fighting. They were fighting over land. And because of that, they were even killing each other. So let's not forget that. So, and the soldiers were going to interview. They were going to have meetings with the communities to say, look, you are brothers. Why will you be killing each other? So these things we must properly reference. That, that area is militant. And they have no reason to kill one another or to kill other Nigerians who are in the armed forces, law enforcement community, who were there, sent from other parts of the country to restore peace. So we must see those communities working, working with those communities to make sure there's peace in that environment. Okay, all right. And I would like to return back to our guest now. So do you think that this issue, or because you mentioned that one of the reasons that we might be having a resurgence of militancy in the Niger Delta might be because the government has not truly taken care of that area. Do you think that if we were to have this system of government by which that this true federalism that a lot of people have been advocating for that each state should control their own resources, do you think that that might perhaps be a change of narratives for the Niger Delta region? Well, I can tell you for free that the only thing that is keeping this country together is this oil. And because the federal government is benefiting so much from the oil, and that is why uh, uh, they are not even interested to talk about uh, uh, restructuring the country to reflect true physical federalism. You know, in other climes where physical federalism is being practiced, it is the, the federating units that contributes to the center. But that is not what is happening now. It is the federal government that controls the entire resources of this country. And these are resources that is coming from ancestral communities. So if you are taking those resources, then they are, you should also take, it, uh, take care of their welfare. You are taking the resources that is in their ancestral lands. You are destroying the environment. There are no job opportunities for the youth. Adjacent to these communities, adjacent to these host communities, the multinational oil companies are living in affluence. There is water, there is electricity. The environment where they are, where the operational bases are is completely cut off from the communities where this oil is even coming from. No social amenities. So our call for a restructured Nigeria, our call for true physical federalism will continue because that is the only way we can address the myriads of challenges that we are currently faced with. And when we say restructure this country, it is not only Niger Delta region that has economic advantage. There are other parts of this country that also have their resources. Unfortunately, the federal government has centered everything on oil. That is why they have abandoned other areas where they also have uh, uh, resources that can be unnest, you know, to, to, to boost the economy of this country. So for those of us who come from oil producing communities where uh, 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 this country is benefiting from, we don't see the oil as a benefit anymore. We see the oil as a blood oil because people are dying every day as a result of this oil. And these communities where this oil is coming from are living in perpetual poverty. And so we are calling on the president of this country to, as a matter of urgency, in the mid midterm, direct the multinational oil companies that are operating outside the shores of the Niger Delta region to relocate their headquarters back to this place. If you take a look at the geopolitical zones in this country, the Niger Delta region is even seemingly peaceful and safe compared to what is happening in other places. You could see the violent 
and the insecurity in the northeast and in the northwest and in the south south uh, southeast. Even in the, the, the southwest where the president comes from, you could see that they are calling for Odudua Republic. The Niger Delta is not calling for a republic. Our conversation is that the president should address the socioeconomic challenges of our people. And that can only be done if there is a restructured country. Restructure the country so that everybody in this country can have something to contribute to the center. People are over dependent on this oil and people are dying as a result of it. Nobody is happy that Nigeria military will lose up to 17 personnel and officers. They are human beings for crying out loud. You saw how they were killed, dismembered. What could have led to that? What has led to our people to take laws into their hands to a level where you kill Nigerian military personnel that is meant to protect us, defend our territorial integrity in such an inhuman manner? It's barbaric. And if we, if we, want, if we try to isolate the Okwama case, I can assure you that a few years from now, something more devastating could even happen. Because the fundamental issues are, 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 are not yet been addressed. You are a journalist. Come to the Niger Delta region. Today we have the presidential amnesty program. The federal government is benefiting from the stability in the Niger Delta region. But go to these communities. Part of the reason why the amnesty deal was brought to our people is that they will address the fundamental issues. The Niger Delta has become an endangered species. And most of our people have been compromised. Nobody is talking. Sorry to cut you short. Sincere apologies, but apparently we've run out of time. But thank you so much for joining us on Firecrackers. We truly appreciate your contributions to the show. Many, many thanks for joining us.